I'm Charlotte McLeod with investingnews.com. And here today with me is Brent Cook, founder of Exploration Insights. Thank you so much for being here. Great to have you again. Yeah, good to see you again. Nice to be catching up. And our last conversation was all the way back in November when we were in New Orleans. So it's been a little while. And at the time, you said, we seem to be at a turning point for gold. And you're expecting 2024 to be better, which certainly it has in terms of the gold price. So is this what you expected? Are you surprised at how high the price has gone? What are your thoughts? I'm a little surprised at how little their stocks have reacted to this increase in gold price. I thought we'd have a better um, reaction in the gold stocks themselves. But I guess really I think what's happening is AI and high tech is pulling all that speculative money into something that's really working well. And the people that understand this industry are, you know, they're, they're getting older. They're getting 5% at the bank. Um, they're not putting as much money in. So until the general population realizes, understands that everything in this room, everything almost in their, you know, their life requires metal and we are not finding and producing enough to meet future demand. Until they, that happens, I guess we're kind of stuck. What what do you think would make that happen? Because I think with gold in particular, I heard for a long time, you know, if we get to 2000, then that will wake people up. Or if we can get to 2000 and stay there, then it will happen. So for you, what do you think? I, I really don't know. I mean, people say that the, the Fed is going to pivot. Well, we all know it's going to pivot. And I think that's probably mostly baked into it. And when it does, it's going to be just as good for the general market as the gold price. So I don't know what's going to wake it up, wake people up. I, I wish I did. I think I can see it for the base metals. I can see it for copper, uh, where that's actually going to be in more demand. But the gold price, I don't know. That's why I'm sticking to discoveries, because okay. they always react. Okay, good point. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask you one more question about the the miners, just because we have we have the gold producers soon to release Q2 results. I think a lot of people are are looking toward that. And hoping that the higher gold price is going to help them produce good margins. What are your thoughts there? Because we do still have inflationary pressures going on. Well, inflation is coming down on a global basis. I think the um, the miners are most of the gold miners are going to look pretty good in terms of their profitability, and that may bring in some of the generalist funds. But still, I'm not going to invest in AI or gold. What's working? Very, okay. Very fair. So let's go over then to, to discoveries. So can you mention where you are seeing success right now? Um, well, in Argentina, the the, the uh, tax regime and politics has changed. That's a great place to be looking now. And I think we're seeing some discoveries and, and projects down there that are looking pretty good. Certainly, Australia's had some discoveries. The Yukon has had one fantastic discovery. The stock went from, what, 25 cents to five bucks. Um, so we're seeing that happen. And I think we're going to see more discoveries. There's, there is money going into the sector, and there's good people, smart people getting money. So it's going to get better for the discovery stage. Yeah, I, I wanted to, speaking of juniors, when we had talked in November we talked about sentiment in the junior sector, and it wasn't really very good at the time. So do you feel it's improved to, to some degree? Marginally. It did. It, when the gold price went up in you know the spring, uh, a lot of money came back into it. But since then, it's just dropped off. Even though gold prices stayed pretty, pretty high, interest in money coming into it has been dropping off. And so you mentioned right now you're you're trying to focus on the juniors. I think at that time you were looking a little bit higher up the food chain so than you usually do, mm -hmm. focusing on companies with with good deposits that were working at the current metals price. So do you still have, or do you still have an angle there, or have you really shifted over to the discoveries now? No, definitely. definitely. Um, you know, when Joe writes the newsletter, yeah. you talked to him, I think. I did just an hour ago. Okay, so and and he's he is probably better than me at evaluating companies with, uh, that have defined resources in an early stage study. And he has picked up some really good ideas, I think, that are going to do well, not just in the gold space, but in the rare earth space and in the copper space. 
Yeah, so everybody should make sure to watch that interview because we do talk about both copper and rare earth with Joe. So we went there. So so summertime right now, it's it's typically when these juniors are out drilling, right? Is there any are there any campaigns that you can mention that you are you're watching with interest right now? Which he's uh fortune everything. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Off the top of my head, I'd have to look at my list. You'd have to look. I okay, mean, so there, you're there watching- was a bunch of companies out there. Um, gosh, I would, you, you caught me there. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, that's all right, though. So you're watching everything. And other thing I wanted to bring up. So, you know, you and Joe, you mentioned, are traveling around quite often. Any recent site visits that you would want to highlight? Well, Joe has mostly been doing the traveling. Um, and he's been down. He looked at uh, Abra Silver down in um, Argentina. That's, that looks really nice. He went to see Aclara down in Brazil. Um, again, really nice rare earth deposit. I think certainly what's happening in Finland with Rupert and Arian, Arian uh, that's really looking interesting. Um, those are the most recent places he's been. He's always going somewhere. You see, yeah. So again, yeah, definitely watch the interview with Joe because we'll go into some of those ones there. Okay, so we're here at the Rose Symposium, and you'll be presenting, I believe, later today, or if not today, later this week. And the topic is going to be copper porphyries. So I wondered if you had anything that you want to share from that that investors should know. And I'm also curious, how did you how did you go about choosing that topic? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm copper to me is is the metal of the future, in the sense that demand is going to exceed supply. And it takes so long to put a pro- project into production these days. So my talk is is basically titled uh, "Porphyry Copper Deposits for Dummies," and I'm just going to go through the how these things form, how you can evaluate them, um, what their costs are, and that sort of thing. So I think you've got to look at. And here's the big issue with cop- big copper deposits, is they take up a lot of space. They make a big hole in the ground. People uh, in countries and such, uh, that's going out of favor, open pits. So we're looking at now going underground, blockading, pulling the rock down, and then taking it out. Um, that's a whole different scenario in terms of um, exploration costs, uh, development costs, and mining costs. So that means the grade that works might have worked a surface. Basically, I think it's got to be double that to work underground. And then I lay out some examples. Okay, so copper, another topic that I talked about with Joe as well. And one thing that came up in that conversation was, so we know that there's this copper supply crunch building. He had mentioned maybe it's it's coming forward a little bit. So that's going to happen maybe sooner than we expected previously. So when it comes to copper stocks, are you still do you still want to focus on exploration there or something that's further along the curve that might be ready for, for this copper bull market? Well, both. I mean, both. you know, we own Aero Copper, which is in production and, and growing. Um, and then there's exploration projects out there as well. Um, so, you know, it, it, both both things. But really what's, what's key is, is the company looking for something or are the drill results you're seeing early on enough just to justify additional uh, financing, I guess, because you got to keep drilling. Okay. Okay. Good. To, yeah. It doesn't have to be either or, which is a good thing to remember. So often when you present at these events, you focus on due diligence and how people can do a better job of that. And one thing I wanted to ask you, so of course people should understand how to do that, but I was thinking about this company Red Pine earlier this year where they had the CEO essentially manipulating the drill results. So I thought to ask you about, you know, the limits of due diligence. How do you handle something like that? Well, it's, it's, it's tough if someone's not, if you're not getting the true assays. I mean, the only thing you can go by is public information. Um, so that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I remember a project I went and looked at years ago in China, a company we owned with Rick Rolls, uh, early company, Global Resources. And they'd put out a, like 37 meters of half an ounce of gold. I went down there to look at it. And we're underground, and I'm asked through interpreter, the Chinese guy, where did you sample? 
and the sample went right along the vein. And so instead of it being 37 meters long, it wasn't. It was, it was you know, it was a vein about yay big. And he asked the, asked the fellow why he did that. He said, well, that's where the gold is. So it was very logical in his mind, if I'm sampling, I'll sample where the gold is because that's what he thought the boss wanted. So just things like that, I, you don't, don't realize them until you see them. That's tricky. Okay, well, it makes me feel a little bit better to, to hear you explain it like that. Okay, I think that is pretty much it from me. I know, I know that you're you're pretty commodity agnostic when you look at things. Are there any others that we haven't talked about that you're you're interested in right now? Well, again, certainly rare earths um, and the heavies, and that's that's a clara, which is what uh, Joe probably talked to you about. Copper, silver. Um, I, I saw a silver company here that I'm going to spend more time looking at early stage. Um, because, you know, now that Mexico's gone to shit, certainly for open pits, and it's going to be tough for underground as well, you've got to start looking elsewhere because there's not many pure silver plays. So I think that's a good place to be looking uh, with Argentina and Bolivia opening up more. Those are two places I'd be looking. Okay. Thank you for going through all those things. I'll put it back to you one more time if there's any final thoughts that you would add. I know just before we turn the camera on, we're talking about how can we bring up global warming, which is a, a focus for you that you know a lot about. And so I'll put it back to you and see if you want to add any thoughts there before I let you go. I, I minored in climatology at university, and I, it's always an interest to me how the earth works. And when this global warming thing started coming in the you know, front pages, I guess, I put a lot of time into it, and I still do. And bottom line, it's happening, it's man-made, and it is going to be a serious problem. I mean, CO2 lets short wavelength, wavelength light in, absorbs and reflects long wave heat back to the Earth, and it's a fact. We know where it's coming from because of the isotopes, um, et cetera, et cetera. This is, this is what's happening. So people can doubt it, but it's real. And it's, I imagine it's something that people should consider when they make their investment decisions in some regard. Well, it's certainly the weather is changing. I mean, up in the, you know, Canada now, the glaciers have retreated enough that people are finding new things where the glaciers used to be. Um, the, you know, weather events are becoming more extreme, both in terms of rain and drought. That's causing real problems. Uh, those sorts of things you got to take into consideration. Okay, well, I'll come prepared in a future interview to talk about it a little bit more. I told you I was not ready for this because no nobody's, nobody's ever asked me to talk about climate change. But thank you very much for, for going through all my topics as well. Great to have you. You're welcome. Okay, and once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with InvestingNews.com, and this is Brent Cook. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. We'd also love to hear your thoughts, so leave us a comment below.